Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, you know, we are always here happy to answer Muslims and Mohammedans about uh, Christianity. And we encourage them always uh, to come here so they will learn about their belief and our belief. You know, the problem with Muslims, they never read their own book. They do not know even what they believe in. They do not know who is your, their God. Uh, but they have one problem. Is Jesus, why Jesus is God? Why Jesus is God? And you notice that we as a Christians, we debate with Muslims about if Jesus is God or not. Which means both of us, we agree that Jesus is so good to the point, is he God? Maybe he's not. So, in the same time, we are debating about Muhammad. He is a child molester. He is a fraud. He is a cheater. So, we have a huge level of conversation between who is there and who is ours. And then, when a Muslim, he tried to question Jesus, he cannot find anything about Jesus. So, what he do? You know, they go and copy-paste questions. Obviously, they did not even read the verses. They are trying to point for us. So here we have a Muhammadan saying, Can someone clarify this, please? This. Totally not the fids. Okay. Matthew 4, 1. Then Jesus was led up to the uh, by the Spirit into the wilderness, to be tempted by the devil. If Jesus is God, and God created the devil, how does God get tempted by the devil? Honest, uh, honest answer, please. No trolls. Well, you know, if you go to uh, if you go to Matthew yourself. I mean, did the Muslims even go or read? Like, how, how the Muslims, he, you know, uh, how the Muslims, the question is, how the Muslim, he didn't know about those verses, if they are there, but he could not see what it says there. You know, I mean, do you, like, like you, when you read a book, you read a verse and you stop, and that's it? So if we go to Matthew, because this story is reported in Matthew, reported into uh, in Luke, or we go to Matthew, it's the same. You will see that Jesus was not tempted by anybody. You see the word in English, tempted. Tempted, this is the confusion. The confusion is, like, I got tempted mean I did something wrong, you know, you tempted me to do it, you know. But you will notice if you read, you are confused maybe because of the English translation. In Arabic we say tajruba, tajrib. So Satan, he tried Jesus. This is what the tempted mean. But Jesus never failed. So if you read in Luke or in Matthew, let us open Matthew at the same time, so he will not say, oh, I, I wanted Matthew. You will see that it doesn't matter really at the end of the day. Satan failed and Jesus won. As simple as that. So, how can God be tempted? You just prove to us that Jesus is God. Because Jesus never failed. Satan, he tried his best, and he failed. This is Matthew 4. I just opened it, so he will not say I'm reading a different chapter or something different. While the Muslims are asking questions, how Jesus can be God, 
You will see here that Satan is saying to Jesus, if you are a son of God. <laughs> Do you guys notice what, uh, I mean, how hilarious they are? So what is the temptation coming to do? The temper, which, is mean, which means Satan, come to him and said, if you are the son of God. So you are questioning us, if Jesus can be God, when the verses you are quoting for us confirming that he is, what is the challenge is? If you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. So Satan, he's asking Jesus to do something. If you are, then you do this. What Jesus said. But he answered and then and said, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word and proof, but that proceeded from the mouth of God. This is the first failure. He did not do what Satan he want. Satan he asked for something. Then the devil hooked him up into the holy city, and set him on the, uh, like you know, the, the edge of the temple, and said to him, "If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, He shall give his angels charge over you." And in their hands they shall bear, bear you up. Lost do lost you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It's written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Look at the answer, which means you cannot try God. You cannot try me. You cannot try my father. But the Muslim, he saw only the first verse. As you see, Satan, he is trying. Like, you know, if I, if, if there is somebody offering me to convert to the, uh, to the garbage of Muhammad, he offer me. I say to him, stay away from me, Satan. Does that mean I am being tempted? No. He tried. Do, guys, do you understand what happened? If somebody offer me, and the Muslim, they offer me many time, a lot of money to stop coming to talk about Islam, a lot of money. Actually, one of you, you have a recording, he posted on YouTube. They offer me life on air, you know, they, they started, were texting me in Skype, we offer you money. I said, just say it online, say it on air, what do you want to offer me? They offer me $100,000 if I sign an agreement, I will never come back online. Just take it and go cash so this is Satan trying me he offered me or he challenged me if I did not fail into Satan then how Jesus is not God then if Jesus fall into Satan request then Jesus is not God so your excuse is false and your argument is false from the beginning and Jesus said to him clearly, you cannot tempt your Lord, your God. And then the devil, he tried for the third time. I will give you all those things. Just bow down and worship me. What Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord, your God, and him only you shall serve. So how Jesus feel? So your argument is a funny argument and we don't find even a reason to say how Jesus can be God, yet this has happened because Jesus did not fail into sin. If Jesus, he fall to the sin, then Jesus is not God. Satan, he could not make him do anything. Not a single thing. Jesus, he cast him away. And you will notice here that Jesus, he fasted for 40 days. If you go to Luke 4, there's more details. That Yeshua, he fast for 40 days, which no human can do. Even though Jesus is a human by the flesh, 
and he's God in the same time. He's a full man, full God, and it is impossible for the man to fast for 40 days. In 40 days, he ate nothing. 40 days, a man in flesh. So when the Muhammadan they come and they you know they try their best to find something not right about Jesus being God, we find it very silly because as you see, even the verses you you know you choose for me, Satan he is not testing Jesus the human, he is testing Jesus the Son of God. Did Jesus say to him, I'm not the Son of God? <laughs> you know, how many times the Muhammadan they say where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. As you see, Satan, he's asking him to do things nobody can do save God. Like order the stones to become bread, and the stones will become bread. But all of us, we knew that Jesus, he did way more than those things. I mean, even according to the city Muhammad, Jesus, he raised people from death. According to the city Muhammad, Jesus, he created from the mother bird. He breathed into it. From his breath, he gave life. According to the city Muhammad, Jesus, he healed the leper. Jesus, he made the blind see, which means he gave him a new creation and new eyes. Jesus, he controlled the nature. Jesus, he can tell you what you hide in your houses. So, is that going to be difficult for Jesus to do what Satan is asking for? No, very easy. But still, he did not give him what he want. For it says, don't tempt your Lord. You cannot tempt me. So this is the trial of temptation. It's not Jesus being really tempted and he fell into it. And there's a huge difference. In the same time, what about we return the question for the Muhammadan? By the way, my Skype is open if you are a Muslim. Feel free. I will be happy to have you with us. I will go with your logic. So if shaitan, he challenge and he asks for things and he refuse, that is temptation. Satan, he refused to accept Jesus to be his Lord. He accept, he refused to accept the Father. He have his own kingdom. That is a temptation, is attempting, like, you know, he's, he's attempting something, attempting to establish his own kingdom. In the Quran, if we go, we will find the Quran using the word Iblis, which is very questionable. Yet the Muslims, they claim that the language of Allah is Arabic and the Quran is an Arabic book. You will see Iblis, 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 Iblis. All those stories here is about Iblis, you know, trying Allah by refusing to bow down to Adam. Look how many times. Chapter 2, verse number 34. Chapter 7, verse 11. Chapter 15, verse number 31. Chapter 15, verse 32. Uh, chapter 17, 61, chapter 18, verse number 50, chapter 20, verse 116. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, because, because uh, <clears throat> chapter eight, uh, 38, verse number 74, chapter 38, verse number 75, uh, because the Quran is a stupid book, you cannot find even a story in one place. You know, it's all over the place. It's like, you know, somebody trying to wear his socks, uh, uh, and uh, one socks is with the pen with the pants and the other socks is with the with the other room and the other and the one shoe in the second floor and the third the second shoe is in the first floor it's all over the place but if you focus with me here according to muslims allah is god according to muslims nobody can question allah And the one who question Allah is a kafir. He is Satan. He is an infidel. Nobody have the right to question Allah. This is what the Muslims they say, the Muhammadan. But look what happened here. 
In chapter 2, verse number 30, Behold, when your Lord, he said, the translation is very really like funky, the Lord said to the angels, I will create a caliphate in the earth. They said, we'll do, create somebody, we'll do mischievement and shed blood. Such a conversation between the creature and the creator, and those creatures are angels, is a question of rebellion. Allah being tempted now and tested. He is being tested. What Allah will do now? They are asking him. Are you going to do this? And here you notice that the title of Allah as God dropped down to the bomb because now if he is God, how you question how the angels who they are totally obedient to Allah, they question Allah. Something wrong in the story. Have you ever heard an angel question the one they are serving? They are angels. Those are not a human being. Those are angels who saw God, they are with God, they you know that they they, they they hear God, He give them commands. So they are they are with him in heaven. How they question God. So questioning God here is a trial to Allah and Allah failed. Why? First of all, Allah, when they ask him the question, are you going to create someone who would do mischievement? And this is the human being. Yet we are the one who celebrate thee, praise thee, glorify thee. What Allah has said to them, I know what you know not. In the case of Jesus, Jesus, he gave the answer to Satan. He did not say to him, I know what you know not, which is a stupid claim. What do you mean you know what I know not? Well, isn't it Adam, he did mischievement? Are we listening? He just told them, he supposedly is refuting them. So if you go and see what Jesus said to Satan, Satan got busted the same as we got the Abdul busted here every day. Allah, he could not answer them. What he said, I know what you know not. And you know, I wish that the story stopped here. Because now Muslim, they can play with this. Well, he just said, I know what you know not. He did not say he will not do mischievement. Allah until now did not say, you are wrong. Adam will do, will not do mischievement. No. If he stop here, the problem can be fixed. But look what happened. Then Allah, he taught Adam the names of all things. Then he placed them before the angels and said, Tell me the name of those things if you are truthful. The translation here is false. Sadiqeen. Sadiqeen means truthful, not right. You see the Muslim when they translate, they hide things because that is an embarrassment. Allah accusing his angels to be a bunch of liars. He did not say if you are right. I mean, do you even have a shame when you translate? We just changed the translator to Muhammad Hilali Khan, Hilali and Muhammad Khan. And now we find if you are truthful. There's a huge difference between if you are right and if you are truthful. If you are right, that's mean you can be wrong, but it doesn't mean you are lying. You are just wrong. You know what I mean? If I say something, and in the moment I believe it's true, well, and it's not, I'm being wrong, I'm not lying, because it's what I believe. But if I know it's wrong, <laughs> I know it's, it's a lie, and I say that's a lie. So look what Allah he is here is doing. Allah, he wanted to prove to the angels that the statement they made about Adam is a lie. He accused the angels to be not truthful. But if you go back, you will see that the angels, they were truthful, really. This is what Adam did. And actually, Adam himself and his wife were kicked out from heaven a few verses after. And then how Allah wanted to prove to the angels that he 
is the one who knows what you know not. He taught Adam the names of all things, and he told the angels, tell me the names of those things if you are truthful. Here you see that the one who wrote the Quran, he have a brain of a mosquito. Literally. Because I cannot prove to you that I know more than you by asking you what is the name of my cat, which I gave it the name. Imagine I'm debating with the Muslim Sheikh. And now I want to prove that the Sheikh, he knew no, he know nothing. I said to him, okay, what is the name of my cat? The Sheikh, he said, well, <clears throat> okay, uh, Tutu? Uh, no. Um, Ufu? Uh, no. Uh, Okay, hold on. Uh, Lulu? Uh, no. Okay. Um, Dada? Uh, no. Um, and you know, we spend the whole day and this Sheikh is trying to guess the name of the cat. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, he could not figure out the name of my cat. I call the CIA, you know. How in the world that prove that I know more than this sheikh? How that can be a refutation to anything in the world? So I bring a cat and I give the cat a name. And then I say to you, Tell me the name of this cat if you are truthful. And the poor you start guessing. Susu, Fufu, Dudu, Mimi, Tutu? No? Okay, um, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, uh, no, you do not know. I am Allah. I know the name of the cat. Have you ever heard of his stupidity. So when a Muslim, he come to us and he ask us about logic, like a logical question, if Jesus is God, how he can be tempted? But you go, you will find that Jesus was not really tempted. He, the Satan, he tried. He tried the temptation. That's what tempted mean. He tried to tempt him and Jesus never obeyed Satan. Here, Allah was questioned, and this is a trial. I'm trying you, let us see. How you are going to create a man who is going to do bloodshed? How I prove you wrong? I name things and I ask you, tell me the names of those things. Even the cat, she could not believe such a stupid question coming from the one they call him God. What if I, from now on, each time a Muslim, he call me and he say, Christian Prince, you are a liar not truthful, I said to him, tell me the name of this cat if you are if you are truthful. Remember, the stupid one who made this verse, he is trying to prove that Allah is God and angels are not. Correct? The whole point is, Allah, he knows what you don't know, not know. That's the whole point, Allah is God. How Allah, he proved that he is God because he gave a name to the cat and the angels could not know the name. What about we do the opposite? If Allah really want to do something smart, he said to them, okay, take this animal, give it a name, don't tell me, hmm? go, go far away, give this cat a name and don't tell me and then come to here and ask me what is the name of this thing. And I will tell you. What Allah, he did is the opposite. He named things and then he told them to Adam, look at the, look at the stupidity, it goes even farther. He taught Adam the names of everything. Do Adam really know the names of everything? Let us say they, everything around him, just to make it simple. And here, by the way, he is copying a story from the Old Testament.
Muhammad is copying a story from the Old Testament, but he messed it up as usual. He is a fraud. The Bible says that God you know, uh, uh, taught Adam the names of things, which means he gave him knowledge. This is not about names. He gave him knowledge, the ability to think, brain. He's, he's, now he is able to recognize things. The difference between things as a human, not as an animal. So the story in the Quran proving to us many things. The angels, they try Allah, they tempted Allah to prove that he is God and Allah failed. In the story of Jesus, Satan, Iblis, he tried Jesus, but Satan failed and Jesus was victorious. And then if we continue the story, the angels, they give up. Allah did beat them now. They, 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 they surrender in the debate. They lost the debate. The angels said, glory to you. <laughs> we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Look, what the heck? How they say you have we have no knowledge except what you taught us, yet Allah, He did not teach them that Adam will do bloodshed. <laughs> Here we see that the angels even lying. Because if they are really know nothing except what Allah told them, then where did they get this from? Which Allah is approving them that they do not know. Which means Allah, He never told them this. Are we listening? So do you see in reading just a few lines how many people we found in the sewage of Muhammad? Just a few lines. We are not even reading the whole page. When the angel they say, we know not except what you taught us, but they just say that Adam will do mischievement in the earth, and this is true. And what make it more funny that the angels they say, verily, it is you, the all knower, the all wise. Why he is the all knower? Because he knew the name of the cat. Nobody need know the name of the cat save Allah. A miracle. Allah, he gave the cat a name and he now he knew the name. The angels until now, they are shocked that the only one who knows the name of the cat is the so-called Allah. No one knows the name of the cat. Until now, actually, even the cat herself, she did not know her name. This is a book of God. This is the book of God. A Muslim saying in the chat, what about the moon split? That is even more stupid, my friend. Somebody saw the moon split in the sky. He says, and the, the moon split. He did not even say I did it. Who did split the moon? Secondly, if the moon is split, why the moon is not split now? Did Allah put a crazy glue again? Do you know what split mean? Split mean become two pieces. And not only that, when the Quran says the, the moon is split, he claimed that the judgment day is in, in the corner. So it was a false prophecy. Muhammad always when he see the eclipse, he go crazy, go search the hadith, he pray like crazy. He lose his mind. He get terrified. The verse says, look at the verse here, by the way. This is the Muslim translation. All what you see is a fabrication. Look at the verse in Arabic and look at the verse in English. The verse in Arabic is four words. Read carefully. The verse in Arabic 
is just a total of four words. How in the world the four words became a story? Look at this. All of this is the four words. Suddenly, the verse saying the people of Mecca requested the Prophet Muhammad SAW show them a miracle. So he showed them the splitting of the moon. Like, what the heck? And Muhammad, he claimed that this is a miracle from his God. But if you go in the same chapter later, you will see that they are asking him, how come you have zero miracle? How come, hey, Abdul Muhammad, you have zero miracle, man? So how this man, look at this stupid Quran. How this man is sent by God, claiming that he have miracles, and yet, in the same book, which is came after, you know, the Quran have order, saying it clearly that Muhammad have zero miracles. If you go in the Quran, you will see the following. If you go here, Chapter 13, twice, the Arab asked him, Muhammad, how come you have zero miracles? And chapter 13 came long after the chapter of Al-Qamar, which is a chapter number 54. You might say to yourself, how, how is that? How 13 came after 54? Maybe you do not know that the Muslim, they play with the Quran and they agree. You can search right now for the Quran according to Revelation. Quran according to Revelation. And then search which one came before the moon chapter or the chapter of Arad. Let us go there. Chapter 13, verse number 7, and I think verse number 27 say the same. They are asking him, here we go, verse number 27. They are asking him the same, how come you have no sign? Just one. Just one. They are not asking for much, just one sign. So if the chapter of the moon give us that Muhammad he have a miracle yet this chapter came after the moon chapter long after that mean there's no miracle still and that will be a contradiction for the Quran so if we go right now to the Muslim website Muslim website not our websites you can do right now yourself you can search for Quran according to Revelation Quran according to Revelation. You will find that Quran according to Revelation was sent to Muhammad supposedly at the end of the Quran. It is the chapter 96 in the real Quran. It is a chapter 13 in the Quran today. <laughs> So this is the end of the Quran and still Muhammad have zero miracle. Now let us search for the chapter of the moon, which is a chapter 54. Let us do this together. And then we will see which one came first and which one came after. Oh boy, chapter of Al-Qamar came as 37 and in the Quran today is 54. 
So how many chapter came after it? Almost 50 or 46 chapters. 46 chapter after this, and the people saying, why, why not just one miracle from your God? Why? Just one. Hey, Abdul Muhammad won. So do you see how easy we get them busted? Which means all the fabrication in the hadith about Muhammad having miracles is a fraud. You know, how many times we heard the Muslim saying that if there is a hadith contradict the Quran, we take the, they, we take the Quran. Correct? When they want, they take the hadith. When they want, they don't take the hadith. Like yesterday, we have a Muslim. He, uh, he you know, he, he called me. I called him, actually. Uh, we asked him, okay, just tell us the conclusion. Does the sun run to its fixed course or it doesn't run? Just give us the answer. He will not answer because he is afraid. He's terrified. If he say yes, he's in trouble. If he say no, he's in trouble. And now, do Muhammad have miracles or not? The only miracle Muhammad he have, that he have a God, he knew the name of the cat. Who knows the name of this cat save Allah? Nobody. Nobody. And this is how Allah, he proved that he is God because he gave the cat a name and he told the, 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 uh, the angels, tell me the names of this cat if you are truthful. And the angels said, what the heck? What about the dog? We do not know the name of the cat. Eh? So you will see here that Satan, he tried God and angels, they tried God in Islam and Allah, he failed. He could not prove to them first that he is God. He could not prove that he is all knower. He could not prove anything. And when the angel, they say to him, we know not except what you told us. So where they got the information that, you know, Adam will do mischief and somebody have an answer. Any Muslim can tell us how the, how the angels, actually, and the angels, they are right. Allah is wrong. And then you will find that Allah is asking Iblis, which means Satan, to bow down when the fact, or question him why he did not bow down, <laughs> when in fact he asked the angels to bow down. He did not say Satan. Satan in Islam is not an angel. In Christianity, Satan is a fallen angel. In Islam, he is a genie. Different creature is made from fire. Uh, Ammar, he is saying, thank you, Ammar, for your comment. We appreciate it because Muslim comments is like gold for us. Literally. Ammar, he said, why someone, why does someone, an intellectual man like you, get out of deceiving your followers by mis directing the alter alittering of the truth that's amazing the answer for that is in the quran the quran says that nobody can deceive anybody except allah allah is the biggest deceiver so my friend are you saying that i took the place of allah isn't it your god he says Are you going to guide those who Allah misguide? Hmm? All those verses 
is about Allah being the one who misguide everybody, not me, my friend. Are you replacing me with your God? Your God is the devil. And when you say I'm misguiding, why you don't call me and get me busted? How Allah, who is the one who misguided the disbelievers? Chapter 40, verse number 74. Besides Allah, they will say, they have vanished from us. Nay, we do not invoke anything before. Thus Allah led astray the disbelievers. <laughs> who is the one who led astray the disbelievers? Allah. Are you there? If you want, you can call me and I will be happy to have you and you can prove me wrong. Why you don't do it? Correct people? Don't complain, prove that I am deceiving when the Quran says that your God is a true deceiver, not me. The Quran says, This is your book. Anyone he texts me in Skype claiming to be a Muslim, if I call you once, you did not answer, I will block you, just to let you know. I don't have time for kids. In the Quran, in chapter 16, verse number 93, it says, Had Allah willed, he could made you all in one nation, but he sent astray whom he will. So why people, they are in disagreement with each other? Allah, it's in the front of you. And he guide who he wills. So if there is somebody in Thailand worshiping Buddha, it was the decision of Allah. If there is somebody is guided to kiss the black stone of Muhammad, it was the decision of Allah. And the verse in the front of you. Why there is people they are astray? Is that because shaitan he took them away? No. The verse in the front of you, it is Allah. Which is obviously he is shaitan. Allah is like a walking sleep person. Based on this. He says something when he is asleep and he say the opposite when he is awake. In one hand, he claimed that Satan is the one who deceive you. In one hand, he claimed that he is the only one who deceive everybody. Ah, look at this, Amar, he just got me busted. Amar, I don't know what do you do for a living, but I advise you never ever try to work as a lawyer. Because if you are against me, I will smash you like a mosquito. Look what you just said. Guys, listen carefully. Ammar, a second ago, he accused me to be a deceiver. Just a second ago. Remember, this is the previous post. A second ago. After I showed him that Allah is the biggest deceiver, Ammar, he changed his course. Like a mule. And now he's saying this. Christian Prince, Allah has unlimited knowledge and this is required to deceive. So, of course, Allah has the ability to deceive you and you have no ability to deceive Allah. Like, what the heck? A second ago, you accused me that that's me. Look, look what you just said. You just said that I am Allah because the one who can deceive is only the one who have extreme knowledge. This is your word. Allah has unlimited knowledge and this is, is required to deceive. I never heard of such a logic that in order to deceive, you have to have a lot of knowledge. Knowledge of deceiving. But a second ago, he said, Christian Renz, what does an intellectual man like you, you go out and deceiving people, huh? Mr. Guy, misdirecting them, lettering them for the truth. Now he agreed that the one who deceive you people is Allah. Allah is the devil.
your knowledge is required okay you just said i cannot deceive allah first of all how i can deceive someone is not exist can you call me and prove to me that your Allah is even exist? I can prove that this cat is exist. Can you prove that your Allah is exist? You are asking a scientist to try his medicine on a rat which is not created yet. So can you call me and show me how you can prove to me that your God is exist? We have tons of a proof that Allah cannot be exist. Who want to try? Do you like to call me Mr. Ammar? You can call a sheikh to join you. Thank you, Omar. We have a Omar. He is an ex-Muslim, obviously, from Somalia. He is not Christian yet. Well, my friend, I hope soon we pray that your Lord will bring you to him and you will enjoy the kingdom of God with the real God. There's many fake gods. They will take people to hell. Look, um, uh, uh, one his name is Omar, the other one his name is Ammar. Omar, he said, he is from Somalia. As a Somali, non-Muslim, due to Christian prince, I am happy. I am not Christian yet, but I love Christian prince. God bless. Thank you, my friend. I think Mr. Ammar is afraid to call me because later after the end of the debating me or speaking to me, he will be happy like Mr. Omar. He will leave Islam and he will come back a few days after and he will say, Christian Prince, thank you very much. As an ex-Muslim, I'm so happy and I love you very much. Ammar? Do you want to take a challenge that if you call me, you will not leave Islam? Hmm? Do you want to take a challenge? You know, I, I don't like people to give me a drama. You know, like uh, uh, there is a channel in uh, Indonesian channel inviting me to speak uh, in Tech Talk. Uh, uh, and I said, uh, no, I don't go and do interview, you know, etc. blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, look, let me show you what I receive. In drama, man. Drama. Suddenly I became a person who don't care for Indonesian people. Indonesian Muslim only know your name and listen to you, but most of them, they don't speak English. They only watch your translation videos. You are well known in Indonesia. They want to speak to you. You are teaching African and Filipino. So we thought maybe you care for Indonesian too. Suddenly, I don't care for Indonesian. 80% of my admins are Indonesians, and I don't care for Indonesian. <laughs> Why? Because I don't say, I say that I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> you have somebody, bring him, call me. You have you are live on air in TikTok, call me. You have Muslims who want to talk to me, call me. But don't give me your drama. Somebody saying, Lefons, Lefons. Hey, Lefons, are you a Muslim, my friend? Are you a Muslim, Mr. Lefons? Mm. 
Give me the answer, please. You are a Muslim, right? So Mr. Lefon, Lefron's saying, isn't it wrong when Jesus said the smallest seed is the master seed when it is the, in fact it is not? Who is a person here? He's a Muslim. He agree with that. Who support this statement from the Muslim community? Anyone? You are afraid to respond to my remark. You know you require knowledge to deceive. You would not even. My friend, you are just a foolish man. So you are saying to me, I have knowledge equal to the knowledge of Allah, and I can deceive you the same as Allah deceive you. And as long you are saying that you have a requirement to have knowledge to deceive, that means shaitan, he was more knowledgeable than your prophet because according to the Quran, shaitan, he deceived your prophet and he made him commit sin. And not only that, he gave him satanic verses, which mean satan can make Quran the same as Allah. Yet Allah, he claimed that nobody can make Quran like him. And then we find that Muhammad received satanic verses. <laughs> and now Ammar is celebrating because Shaitan, he gave his prophet satanic verses and he was knowledgeable more than his prophet to the point he was able to deceive Muhammad and Muhammad could not recognize that this is not Quran from Allah. Yet it is Allah who said, no, no, no one can make Quran like my Quran. <laughs> How the stupid Muhammad he claimed that his God told him, no one can make Quran like my Quran. And then a little shaitan, he sleep in the nose of the Muslim. He fooled Muhammad and he gave him satanic verses. And then how Muhammad he fix it? He say, Allah told me Allah will delete whatever satan he throw in my mouth. What the heck? <laughs> hey, Amr, uh, Ammar, who is the one who wrote this text? Is that shaitan in your mouth, in your keyboard, or this is Allah? How shaitan was able to deceive your prophet, giving him satanic verses, and your prophet have a five minute break? Break? Uh, this Muslim is a chatting from work. This is what happened when you hire a Muslim. Let us go back to the first one. Forget about this, Ammar. He's a potato. Mr. Lefranzo, are you a Muslim, my friend? You are lying. Okay, hold on. You are lying. It means without Allah, we all get lost. And he let arrogant ones go astray. Look at the look at this science of answer, brother and sisters. Man, who can answer this? Look at this genius. Look at the cat looking at your answer, brother. Guys, look at this. This guy he just gave a hammer on the tail of Allah. Look what he just said. You cannot take it back. You just post it. You can't tell me I did not say that TCP. You just posted. We have it in screenshot. We got it there. You become famous. So look what happened. You're lying. It mean let the arrogant ones go astray. What the heck? But is it Allah supposedly he came to guide the arrogant ones, you idiot? Allah will guide the one who is guided already? What kind of GPS did GPS? Brother and sister, no, 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 listen. Allah, only he will make the arrogant go astray, brother. 
But isn't it all the tribe of Quraysh, they were arrogant? All of them. And they don't accept Muhammad to be a prophet? So based on your statement, who is the one who guide them to Islam? If Allah will never guide the arrogant, <laughs> I will give you a name. You tell me if this is true, correct answer or not. It was Billy Clinton. It was a Trump. Or it was the president of North Korea, Mr. Kim Kong Chin. Who is the one who guide the arrogant? Even many of them, they used to fight against Muhammad, not only arrogant, they used to kill Muslims. They go in war with the Muslims. Abu Sufyan, which your prophet, he paid him a lot of money to convert to Islam. You buy people, you idiot. Uh, no problem, Allah, he guide not arrogant, so Allah, he guide who? Well, if I ask you who is the arrogant, what you will say? And Abdul, Abdul, let me get you busted again and again. Hmm. You know, Abdul, when he tried to be smart, he dig more. You know, Abdul is like somebody, he he go in the shoulder of the, of the road in the desert. And then he wonder why his car is not coming out from the sand. And there's a big sign in front of him says, don't go out of the road. Very soft sand. And now he is in the sand quick. Look what you just said. Let's see Quran. Allah, he said, that the one who Allah misguide, nobody can guide. So in order to be misguided, first, you have to be misguided by Allah. Let me make it, I know you are slow, like your prophet. So in order to get the point, to the point you are misguided, you have to be misguided by Allah. Allah, who, by the, the way, the Muslim, they translate saying astray. In Arabic, it doesn't say astray. It says yudil, deceive. Do you want to guide him who Allah has made to go astray? So who is the one who made people go astray? Allah. And why we cannot guide them? Because Allah is the one who misguide them. Even Muhammad cannot guide them. And now he is saying, why you don't go to chapter 2, verse number 26. Let us go there. Oh boy. Let us go there. You will cry again. Hmm. Why you don't call me, Abdul? So people can laugh. What about we open the interpretation for the verse and then people, people will see. Guys, chapter 2, verse number 26 is his request. Verily Allah is not ashamed to set forth a parable, even a mosquito or so much more, when it is bigger or less between two brackets. And as for those who believe, they knew that it is the truth from their Lord. But for those who disbelieve, say what did allah intend by this parable by it he misleaded many allah is answering now you see the quotation here they are questioning what allah he meant that's all what he meant by this parable what allah he meant by the parable allah he answered he says by it he misled many and many he guided. So even when Allah, he gave a parable, he gave it to misguide. So it's not their fault. Do you see it? People, do you see it? This Abdul, he asked me to put this verse on the screen. And now he is biting his fingers, feeling sorry for asking for it. 
I am the truth. Why you are calling Amara gay? Why why you do that? One more time you say that, I'll block you. Did the guy do anything to you? Why 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 people are so stupid? The guy is a Muslim, he is arguing with us. So what this have to do with gay and what what's why are you why people are stupid? If you say that one more time, I will block you forever. What an idiot. You want to answer this Muslim, answer him. There's no need for you. You are a gay and you are a stupid people. Amar, call me, man. What link? What link? What, what do you mean link? We, we use a Skype. Call me in Skype. This is my Skype. Just search it in Skype and... Text me. We are waiting for Ammar to call us. So look what, what uh, Mr. Uh, uh, B. Nido, he said. Allah, even when he teach Quran, he misled people. Can you believe it? This is a verse of his choice. Even when Allah he speak, he misled. Who he like? It is his choice. It's not even your choice. Ah, uh, I'm avoid to read to the end. Let us read to the end. And he misled thereby only those who they are rebellious. Well, you stupid idiot. You see, if Allah, he misled those who they are rebellious, that means Allah, he fixed nobody. Because the one who they are not bad, they do not need that guy to tell Allah. They are not bad. <laughs> when they asked Jesus about speaking to the sinner, Jesus, he said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. So you strip at you and your God saying that your God, he want to heal the healthy. <laughs> and he is dying. He wanted to read to the end. Allah will not guide the one who disobey Allah, brother. You, what, what a stupid religion. Then can you tell me who is the one who guide, as an example, Abu Sufyan, Khalid ibn walid all the kuffar of Muhammad family and his relatives, who guide them? They are rebellions, and even they go in war against him. They go really in war, literally. Who guide them? Ammar, stop making drama and asking me, may Allah guide you. Your prayer is false, my friend, because as you see, it's not up to you to guide me or not. You must believe in destiny. So even what I am saying right now, according to your stupid religion, I say what I say because Allah, he wrote that in his book 40,000 years before my creation or the creation of Adam. So don't make the drama, may Allah guide you. Call me. Call me and show me how you can answer. As you see, you Muslim, you fail. Allah, he, dis, he, he, he misguide those who they are bad. You do not need to misguide the one they are bad. They are already bad. Are you stupid or what? Have you ever heard of somebody he can make someone Lost, lost. I mean, he's lost. What average of a stupidity the stupidity is, like somebody is driving in the wrong highway, and now I'm going to misguide him, he is already in the wrong highway. Okay, your Skype name is Anido? No, I, I got only... Uh, Hanif Khan, uh, there's no, you are, you are calling, calling the uh, text in the wrong person. <clears throat> uh, 
Let us see this guy. Well, he declined my call. He is an idiot. Let us block him then. Who is a Muslim would like to join us? This is my Skype. Search it in Skype. Text me. And I will call you immediately. Hey, all right, Ammar. Ammar, guys, is getting Skype ready. It's going to take him 10 hours to get Skype ready. It takes you two seconds to download Skype. And then, you know, everybody have a Skype. You don't have a Skype now? Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us and join us? As you see, the Muslims, they give us proofs after proof that even Allah, when he sent the Quran, he sent it to deceive people, even the Quran. And the verse is in front of you. And this is the choice of the Muslims, not my choice. I'm not the one who quote this verse. Who is a brave Muhammadan would like to join us live on air? As you see, they fail miserably. And this is why we see thousands of Muslims leave Islam watching my videos. You push the wrong bomb? It's too late. I blocked you. What do you mean you push the wrong bomb? Make a new name. That's it. I block it. I can't take it off. I called you twice, potato. Twice. Twice you call you, you push the wrong bomb? Make a new name and text me. Guys, he pushed the wrong bomb. He was nervous. Look, Christian Prince is calling me. Which one I will take? Which one I will hurt? The one says accept or the one says reject? Accept, reject, accept, reject. Let us click at reject because I think for me as a Muslim, by clicking reject, that's mean I accept. Awkward. You click at the wrong button. What else you do in your real life? No, I called you twice, potato. Do you want to challenge me? Who is a brave Muslim would like to join us? Anyone? Any half one? We take shakes, we take anything. Call your... Imams. Tell them help, we need help. And oh man. <clears throat> Let us see. What was your name? What was his name? BB something? Oh, no. Uh, ah, this one. Here we go. Hanif Khan. Hanif Khan. Okay. Hanif Khan, he said, don't lie. You did not call me twice. You liar. This is the first call. No answer at 4.33. And this is the second call. 457 decline potato who is the one is lying huh who is the one is lying don't lie okay don't lie now text me i don't know what let me call you here we go let us see you know i want to see the man
Hello? Hello? Must be Fakira. Are you Fakira? Fakira. This is Hanifa Khan. It turned to be Fakira. It turned to be Fakira. We thought it's a man. It turned to be Fakira and is speaking with the voice of a girl. Unbelievable. Son of Muta. Block him in the chat too. We have no time for trash. Fakira. I mean, we search for Muslim men. We got nothing but Fakira. What a potato. Amar, you will be back next time? Man. Man, Amar, he gave me 24 hours, period. Thank you, Amar. I will live for the coming 24 hours. Man. I don't know what to do without you and without Fakira. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. He gave me 24 hours more, Amar. He will go away for 24 hours and come back. He want to find the answers. Take it easy, people. Take it easy. Why are you are calling him filthy? He is just a kid. Do we have any brave Muslim? What happened? All of you turned to be girls like Fakira now? Yeah. Do we have any brave Muhammadan? I will be your Muslim brother, inshallah. So, Ammar, me and you, we will have endless penis, brother. What do you think? Who his penis will be longer? Guys, Ammar, he just gave me a good news. Inshallah, I will be his Muslim brother. So, me and Ammar, we will be in the heaven. And we will be holding our penises, which is endless. And I look at the penis of Ammar. I say, Ammar, why your penis is smaller, man? Ammar, he'll get upset. He says, even here you want to debate me? Ammar, you are asking me to believe in Allah, so I will get an endless penis? Is that a reward or a penalty? Ammar, did you watch the documentary about the Amazon River, brother? Imagine your penis go in the Amazon. Man, do you know what is inside the Amazon River? Unbelievable. You know, those small fish who bite everything. They will rip your penis apart. Sausages. Endless penis. This is religion of God. Huh? What about the testicles? Are they going to be endless too? <laughs> you will be my brother, inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> you know, in the Middle East, this is why, thanks to the oil now, things is done. Like, you know, the Qatari, they decide to build a stadium. They decide in the beginning to have an, an engineers who they are local. <laughs> Two weeks after, they fire everybody. They put him and gave him administration position. And they start hiring Ronaldo, and, and, and Rando, Jordando, all names from, uh, from Italy, from England, from ever. Because why? Because how they can build the stadium? Inshallah, we will build it in time. Inshallah. I never heard, by the way, of a God, he himself is saying, Inshallah. Have you ever heard of God, he say, Inshallah? Hmm? What's wrong with this God? Inshallah. Look, look at this. Me. <laughs> I never heard of my God. He say, Inshallah. <laughs> Look at this. I don't know. The Muslim translation is very funny. Here it says, 
يغنيكم الله من فضله إن شاء الله إن شاء إن الله عليم حكيم إن شاء الله Allah will make you rich, inshallah. And who is saying that? Allah. I mean, who is the, the idiot who made this book? Look, look. Allah will reach you if he will. This is the Muslim translation, inshallah. <laughs> if he will. What do you mean? Aren't you Allah the one is talking? Are you promising them to reach them or not? You know, Muhammad always, he have to make a backup. Uh, <laughs> so he have to make a backup. And the backup is, what if Allah did not make them rich? So he say, inshallah. <laughs> like what? I did not give a promise. Did I say inshallah or not? I did not give you a promise. I said inshallah, but you are Allah. Yes, I said inshallah, which means if Allah will, okay, but, but you are Allah. Yeah, yeah, but you know, what a stupid religion. Do we have any real Muhammadan? First class Muhammadan? Don't send me links in Skype. I don't open links. I don't open pictures. Save your time. I will block you if you do that. <clears throat> do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? Anyway, it looks like we don't have too much customers today. Uh, how long we are here now? One hour, 18 minutes. Let us make it short, you know. And actually, it's getting so late here, I did not eat yet. So I better go and make some food. Uh, description required knowledge, yes or no? My friend, I mean, who is a stupid here? Uh, deception required knowledge. Uh, if there is a sugar or food in the street, there is a mushroom. Let us say there is a mushroom. And then you eat the mushroom. Did you eat the mushroom because you have a knowledge? Or because you are ignorant? And did the mushroom have knowledge? To deceive you and eat it and die? The mushroom is an object, does not have knowledge. It's a plant. The first thing will happen to a human being is not you'll be deceived by somebody who have knowledge. You can be deceived by somebody who is so stupid, even have zero knowledge, like the mushroom. Especially if you refuse to ask yourself questions. Like, do we need to know that Muhammad, do we need to have knowledge really to know that Muhammad is a fraud? We don't. We don't need to read books. A prophet who promised women in heaven, what the heck is that? Pimp, a prophet he promised us boys, a prophet who promised us endless penis. I mean, this is a this is a mockery of the brain of a human being. Even the one who live in the jungle, if you say that to a donkey, he will laugh. So you do not need to have knowledge. However, if a person have knowledge, he can be a better deceiver, and this is why your God is a failure. He have zero knowledge. Your God have a zero knowledge. You see, when the, the Quran says how people they join Islam, when the victory came, victory of what? Of the sword. Before that, nobody is coming to Islam, only the gangs, as-salik. 
when the day of victory came, people enter by waves the chapter of victory. What victory? Go read interpretation. War. Before that, the knowledge of Muhammad was failure. It was the sword. And now all of you, you are a slave. Nobody even dare to question the knowledge of Muhammad and his God. So you are a slave who have zero knowledge about your religion, about other people, about any knowledge. This is why you are terrified to call. When the victory came, people, they enter Islam by waves, not by one, two, three, four, by tens of thousands. It's in front of you. And I challenge you to open the interpretation and read it. Actually, here it says, against your enemy and the conquest of Mecca. When the people of Mecca enter Islam, only when he enter by the sword. Not before, before nobody want to enter Islam. And you will go to the Hadith, you will find that the one who was joining Muhammad into Islam, it was Sa'alik. Sa'alik in Arabic is the same as the outlaw. Like, you know, in the old days when the cowboys exist, for sure the cowboy doesn't make, mean it's bad, but there's people who they are, you know, do, do robbery in the street, <clears throat> the pirate. Those are the one who joined Muhammad. Sa'alik. And when you read the word Sa'alik in the in the English translation, the Muslim they translate Sa'alik as the poor ones. What a big fat liars. Sa'alik is a very insulting word. If you say to any any Arab person you are a Sa'aluk, you will see what will happen. What does this have to do with being poor or rich? Liars liars will end in fire Salik Muhammad was a Saluk and those who joined him they were Salik read with me Abshiru ya ma'ashara Salik al-muhajirin ma'ashara what? Salik al-muhajirin your prophet is Saluk He is calling the Muslim Sa'alik. And how the Muslim they translate? Read with me and laugh. They say Sa'alik means the poor immigrant. In which language is that? You go right now and show search in the dictionary what Sa'alik means. Sa'alik mean poor? In which dictionary, in which language is that? Lusus. The thieves. Anyway, look like we are out of Muslim, you know, there's no more Sa'alik here. <laughs> the last Saluk we got, it was, uh, it was Fakira. <laughs> uh, Mughribun. Uh, you know, Muhammad is a, you know, Muhammad is a crazy man. He come with very weird words, you know. Uh, this is, you know, Mughrib, uh, the word Maghrib means uh, the West. You know, and usually when you say the Mughribun, the one who turned into the West. But according to Muhammad, the one who is Mughrib or Mughribun, those are the homosexual. Very weird. Very weird man. And how, and how, what, what they, what they do, those uh, homosexual, uh, the genie, he sleep with them. And they have them, they have, they make them have kids, babies, who they are homosexual.
This is the answer for the one who's asking the question. Genius, Muhammad. He now Muhammad he explained homosexuality. You know, your parents they sleep with the genie. The genie do do boom boom to them, and then you know you have a son. He is a homosexual. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. He knows everything. Look at this. Who is the Mugharribun? The one who Shaitan he share with them. Share with them what? Share with them bed. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. And I will, if I could go live later, late at night, I will. But honestly, now I'm really angry. I did not eat since yesterday. So I better go before you start hearing my stomach making noise and songs. Uh, you know, when Muhammad, he died, uh, Ibn Abbas, he said, Itfunu sahibakum fa'innahu ya'san kama ya'sanul bashar. Bury your friends. He stink like human. They stink. Not only that. He said, Itfunu sahibakum faqad raba batnahu. His stomach, his belly became so big, full of fart mean the prophet of Allah going to explode because of fart of gas and he's dead so bury him before the fart start all over the place I don't know if you know if a human being when a human being he died and you did not bury him as soon as you can you know like like now they put them in the refrigerator etc uh, if you don't do that the bacteria they will start you know consuming the food inside you the same as always Nothing change. There's always bacteria inside your stomach. So those bacteria, they will cause gas. But now because you are dead, what will happen? The gas will stay and your belly will start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until you become like a balloon. And then, yeah, somebody saying your stomach is lying. <laughs> yeah, this is a story about a guy. He came to Muhammad. He told him, my brother is sick. So he go first time. He come back. He says, it's getting worse. He said to him, drink, let him drink honey. He came back, he said, let him drink honey. The guy, he came third time, he said, Prophet, he's dying. He said, your, uh, your brother's stomach is lying and Allah told the truth. <laughs> what kind of a doctor this doctor is? Your stomach is lying. Imagine you go to the doctor, Joe Biden, and you tell him, man, I'm dying. My stomach is hurting. And Jordan is speaking and scream at you. Says, this is because of a Trump. Allah told the truth. Stop drinking Trump drink. It's Trump. But the Trump had to do, and honey, what if the guy have diabetes? The guy is dying. And then the Hadith says, and the guy never come back because his brother was healed. Whoa! From dying to he was healed. Obviously, he never come back because he will be killed. The, the, the doctor, he just accused him that he's lying. His brother's stomach is lying, and Allah told the truth. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Anyway, guys, thank you for being here. If you like to be updated, always you can join us in Patreon so you can be notified. And as you see, Muslims here, they are living the stage of disability. They can debate us. They can, ref they can refute us. And not only that, even when they ask us to quote a verse for them, they live in the limbo. What a limbo religion. Take care and see you soon again. This is your brother Christian Prince, who is serving you humbly for today. And if I could come back later at night, I will. If not, maybe tomorrow. Thank you, and God bless you.